As some of you might know, I like to participate in what's known as game jams. They are game development challenges where the participants have to create a game within a limited time frame. They are a great way to test one's skills and practice setting reasonable scopes for products. Recently, I participated in a two-day game jam hosted by the online creator Game Makers Toolkit. Check his channel out using the link in the description. It was the largest one I'd ever participated in, and I think I managed to create my best game jam game yet. Here's how I made Orbital Mayhem in 48 hours. At 9 p.m. CEST, Friday 10th of July, the theme which the game is had to incorporate was revealed to be out of control. As explained in the announcement video, this could be interpreted in many ways. Many participants seem to take the route of decreasing the player's control of their character, which I think was a favorable decision. As an epic gamer myself, there are few things I dislike more than not feeling in control of my character's actions. Sure, things around me can be randomized and play with to give some much needed variety to the gameplay, but I must know what outputs my basic inputs will lead to. This is why I essentially set out to make the antithesis. My game was going to give you full control of your character, and the only enemy was going to be your own bad decisions. Enter Orbital Mayhem, a game in which you play as a tank on a tiny planet. Uh, don't ask. Your goal is to shoot 10 statues, and thus shrink the planet a little. Again, um, don't ask. Repeat until the planet is at its smallest. Red destroying the last 10 statues results in a win. The kicker? Your projectiles enter orbit the moment you shoot them, and can destroy you in a single hit. Do your best to fire as few bullets as possible, or the planet will transform into an untraversable hellscape. This was the game idea that I came up with Friday evening, and subsequently began materializing in the morning. First thing I made was the planet. In the beginning, it was nothing more than a default Unity Sphere sitting at the world origin. I added a material to the planet and a script, within which I wrote a method to randomize the color when the game began, as well as a method to change the diameter. This was really all I needed for the earliest version of the game, so I started developing the player. The player controller was largely similar to the ones I made before, in spite of the fact that this one would traverse a spherical body. I just applied a velocity in a normalized direction dependent on my WASD input and multiplied it by a speed variable. One major thing that made this character controller unique, though, was the fact that the player had to be gravitationally attracted towards the planet's core. I accomplished this by following Sebastian Lake's fantastic tutorial on four planets. The link to that is in the description down below, and I'd suggest you check it out. With that, the character controller was complete. Next up were the statues. They started out as many simple collectibles that I spawn around the planet. The spawn position was determined using normalized values from random that inside unit sphere. As the name implies, random that inside unit sphere returns a random point inside a unit sphere. Normalizing that value effectively puts a point on the surface of the unit sphere, and by just multiplying the point by the planet's radius, I could get this bomb position. I've started the game, and every time the planet shrinks, a set number of statues are spawned. That number changes with the size of the planet, but never goes below 10, so that achieving 100 points is always possible. Since so speed is key when it comes to game jams, I initially made it so that just running over the statues gave you 10 points. The collision detection worked using the onTrigger enter method to check whether the statue collided with an object rocking the player tag. Apart from the standard runtime execution such as awake, start and update, onTrigger enter is probably my most used built-in unit method. 
Life as a Unity Dev would be hell without it. Anyway, I then created a Game Manager object which kept track of the score. If the score climbed over 100, it called the rescan method on the planet and shrunk it by 10 units. At that point in the development process, I hadn't even added a model for the statue so it just looked like green shiny balls. Nonetheless, <laughs> it worked! I could traverse the planet, collecting points that in turn shrunk it. This was the most bare bones version of the game, and there was still one core element missing. The bullets. I began with a standard Unity Sphere to which I added a script. Inside that script, I once again used Unto Enter, but this time to detect when the bullet collided with the player, so that I could annihilate them both. I also created a script for spotting the bullets that I attached to the player. When the space bar is pressed down, three bullets are spawned using a prefab. The bullet instances are then temporarily saved so that the velocity can be applied. The velocity needs to be high enough for the bullets to enter orbit, but still so low that they almost graze the ground. The format that I use to calculate the velocity is this. It's probably simpler than you expected, and that's because I never changed the planet's gravity. If I did, I'd have to incorporate it into the equation. I could probably do that, but it wasn't feasible for the jam. Lastly, in the statue script, I changed the object that it checked for a collection collision with from the player to a bullet. Voila, that's it. At this point, I could shoot, move around, get points and shrink the planet. Although, to be honest, it all looked pretty ugly. It was time to spice things up. I'm frankly surprised at how good the game ended up looking. The tank model turned out great, and so did the bullets. I created a main menu that looked really sick, customized the font into this neat retro vaporwave-esque aesthetic, I modeled the statues to indicate how damaged they are since I'd also made them a bit tougher. Perhaps the coolest thing though was the planet itself. I found this awesome planet texture generator that I used for both the normal and the height map. It kinda looks like a huge marble, and I love it. Then came the audio. As per usual, I did most of the sounds with my mouth. You'd be surprised to hear the sounds that can be generated using nothing but kapows and booms. <laughs> the only pre-existing audio clip that I used was for when the tank moved. I found the CC0 engine sound on freesound.org, put it down in Audacity, and just threw it into Unity. The music was also made entirely by me, and honestly, I think it's the best soundtrack I've created yet. Here, just listen. If you're not impressed, here's my past music for comparison. All of that new tribal music consists of me smacking a shoebox, tapping some forks and chanting into my mic. I've got no idea as to why it doesn't sound completely atrocious. I'm just excited <laughs> it worked out. I managed to playtest the game for a bit before it was time to submit. We found it pretty difficult, but definitely not impossible. Our favorite part was seeing the planet get filled with glaring rocket trails. 
I was extremely content with the gameplay, so I built the game for WebGL and uploaded it to itch.io. After a little while, comments started appearing. They were remarkably positive compared to my previous game jams, but also provided very detailed feedback. I was amazed at the fact that people took time out of their day to write all these nice things. Without them, improving would be much more difficult. The vast majority of the people commenting thought that the idea was solid and fun, uh, but the game could be improved by 1. Increasing the juice, aka beefing up the reaction to the player's actions. 2. Preventing teasing. It was possible to just drive to the site and shoot straight up without getting hit. This didn't always work, but was more reliable than trying to actively dodge the bullets, which leads to number three, making the bullets easier to dodge. It is possible for me to slow them down, but only if the gravity is lower due to orbital mechanics and stuff. All in all, I'm very proud of the game I've made, and I'll be updating it shortly to address the problems. I'll also be taking part in the Brackies game jam shortly, and I'll be thinking about streaming it on Twitch. I can't promise you anything, but I'll leave a link in the description to my Twitch channel. Anyway, thank you so much for watching! If you want to support the channel, the easiest way is to just like and subscribe. It's not the numbers that are important, but the fact that people enjoy what I create. You guys motivate me a ton, and for that, I'm extremely thankful. Hope you all have a great day, bye.